Earlier today, I had the chance to talk to Dr. Carol Lieberman. She was a forensic expert in the Jenny Jones talk show murder trial, where she was a forensic psychiatrist for the defense. The Netflix docuseries Trial by Media is out today. So I asked about her experience in that case and how similar situations could arise in the Ahmad Arbery case. Take a look. Well, you know, for one thing, I've been living this story for 25 years, starting from when I was testifying in his case and living through uh, meeting with the family and meeting with John, meeting with him in jail and prison for all of these years and still in touch with him today. And so what bothers me about this particular new um, uh, documentary is how it perpetuates uh, some of the lies and stereotypes from the way that the case was in the day, you know, back in the day. For example, uh, it, it, the media claimed that this case was a gay hate crime and nothing could be farther from the truth. I was on the stand for a day and I explained all about Jonathan Schmitz's life from his birth to um, the time that he shot Scott. Uh, of course, analyzing all of the frames of the Jenny Jones show and um, and explaining how basically the bottom line was he was being charged with first degree murder. And so I had to explain how uh, it wasn't, how we couldn't form the intent to kill. It was diminished capacity. And there were all of these things from his genetic predisposition to Graves disease and mental illness, uh, bipolar disorder and child abuse, a whole a uh, myriad of things contributed to what was going through his mind at the time of the shooting. And of course, the foremost thing was being destroyed. You know, it was all um, uh, catapulted by the Jenny Jones show that was an ambush show. And so when it comes to that type of experience too, uh, so your type of background, for example, makes you very unique when it comes to these type of situations because you're laying out the mental capacity behind an individual when it comes to these type of cases. Now, when you are facing someone such as a uh, prosecutor or a defense person to trying to combat those type of claims, what are they trying to do in order to kind of go against what you're saying or to paint what you're saying in maybe more of a uh, abstract picture saying that it's not necessarily fact, but something that is more corroborating with what we're talking about in a courtroom? Yes. Um, in this case, for example, the uh, prosecutor tried for the whole morning to get me disqualified by saying things like, uh, you know, that I was a, for example, I was a script consultant on soap operas. So he was trying to say that this is a soap opera. I'm just making this up. And it, that's why it is so important in every case to be able to explain the story, you know, not a soap opera story, although <laughs> this could be making it made into a soap opera, but um, the, so that the jury understands exactly what you're saying, what happened in this person's mind. You need to explain it in a way that they can understand it, that they can relate to things in their own life. And um, yes, of course, you know, this was a case where the prosecutor thought it was going to be a slam dunk first degree murder case, because after all, Jonathan Schmitz uh, called 911 after he shot Scott. He called 911. It, there was no question as to who killed Scott. And I am, I have been writing a book all of these years called Murder by TV, which will bring out the truth in both what's behind the justice system, you know, in my uh, time behind in the prisons and in the courts, um, I saw lots of things going on that people don't know about. And same thing with Jenny Jones, you know, uh, that's relevant today too, because um, because even though there aren't really many talk shows per se today, there are reality shows. And the people who come on these shows also get ambushed. And so all of these things are really important for America to know. Plus, you know, one of the things that bothers me about this particular documentary is that John is still alive. He spent 22 years in prison. He was out for good behavior. And he is, you know, alive. He's not just some caricature on a television show, the same clip that they keep showing. Um, and so what is this going to do? He, he actually did a lot in prison to make himself better. He took college courses. He got a certificate. He um, learned how to play the guitar and joined the band. He did all kinds of things. And he's making restitution to this day. So it's really, you know, we can't talk about this case or him as though this is something just in the history books. This is going to be how this shows about how it showed what happened is going to be affecting him today as well.
And you know, when I look at the case that you're talking about in the Netflix documentary, it, it actually brings about uh, something that's happening in the news right now. The Ahmad Arbery case right now is something that's been in the headlines a lot. It's something that's garnering national attention. And if we've seen anything like cases like this in the past, it is going to be something that becomes a little bit of a reality TV type of court case type thing. And I don't mean that to downplay the seriousness of it. I just mean that the public is very much so invested in these type of stories the same way in the past they were, uh, for example, the Trayvon Martin case. People want to follow these types of stories. So how will, a, uh, based on your experience, how will a forensic expert play into this type of thing where maybe, uh, once again, as you were saying in that case, maybe outside things such as maybe racial tensions are infused into this case? You know, I think it's very good that um, cases are uh, being able to be seen by the public. Uh, it teaches things, you know. Um, Sometimes uh, it, what the bad thing is when people pick up on certain elements and make it sensationalized. But I think that everyone can learn things from this. I mean, yes, the case that you mentioned in Georgia, I mean, uh, I think one of the things we're learning is how the DA uh, kept this under wraps, for example, and didn't actually uh, arrest the two men who were chasing him. Um, so, you know, I think it's good that this is transparent. I think you're right to say that, and I think that uh, usually when it comes to these type of things, I would be a little bit hesitant about outside public pressure being infused into a court case. It's something that usually has to be looked at through a, a vacuum, but when it comes to issues like this, it does speak about something larger. It speaks about a public movement where people are demanding change. This just happens to be a, a little bit of the proxy fight, if you will, when it comes to this. Uh, this is, happens to be the court case that people are focusing on in order to really make sure that this type of stuff comes to light. Is this similar to the case that you were working on in that regard? Well, um, you know, when in the Jenny Jones case, uh, there were protests, just like there are now in uh, the case in Georgia. Mm -hmm. uh, in the Jenny Jones case, there were protests by gay groups, because as I was saying, that they tried to make it about this being a gay hate crime. This wasn't a gay hate crime. Uh, Jonathan Schmitz had met uh, Scott and had told him when Scott tried to come on to him before Jenny Jones, he told him, I'm not into that, but I'll be your friend. Mm -hmm. And of course, Scott ignored that and, you know, called up the Jenny Jones show and, you know, then they did this ambush. Um, in the case in Georgia, uh, there are, similarly, there are protests. I mean, sometimes protests do influence what's going on in the court. And um, I don't think it should, I don't think there is a danger that it will taint the truth, you know, in, in any case, because you're seeing all these protests on television all the time. And so that can affect the jurors. Yeah, and it's something that we've seen in a lot of court cases, even when people don't necessarily get the outcome that they want, they tend to blame it on that. And I think that that is something that isn't necessarily true. If you go through jury instructions, for example, and know exactly what they can take into account, it's a lot different than, for example, that what you and I see on the news. It's a very different set of evidence that they're looking at. They don't get to listen to pundits in the media the same way. So I think it's a very narrow scope that they're going to be looking at, and that in ways complicates the outcome a lot of times. So I think it's going to be a very interesting case that gets a lot of national attention over the next coming uh, weeks. And it's something that a lot of American people are going to be very adversarial about. But I think at the end of the day, it's a good thing that we're seeing justice at least be brought out and these individuals will have their day in court and justice could be served to the Arbery family. But doctor, I really appreciate you coming on, breaking down this very complicated issue for us. Thank you.